This demo illustrates how to use Oracle's Project Helidon, an implementation of Eclipse MicroProfile, to generate a simple microservice and then enhance the microservice to illustrate several of the MicroProfile technologies. We will be writing a very simple microservice that returns a friendly greeting to the client. It will use a second microservice, upcase, which simply uppercases a path parameter. I have that already running and we can take a look at how that works. It accepts a path parameter and it returns a JSON object containing the uppercased version of that same value. I have Prometheus already running. We'll be using it to monitor the metrics for our microservice. I've pre-configured Prometheus to monitor where our service will be. Prometheus is correctly reporting that the service is down. Not only have we not started it, but we haven't even built it yet. I've also already downloaded and installed the Haladin CLI. That's a simple process. You curl to retrieve the platform specific version of the CLI for your system, and then run a couple of commands to just make it runnable. What we'll be doing during the demo is we will use the Haladin CLI to create and then continuously build and run the simple greeting service. And we'll access the app to see exactly what it does. We will then add an application specific metric and we'll use Prometheus to monitor that metric and the metrics which Heladin provides automatically. We'll change the greeting microservice so that it uses the MicroProfile REST client API to access the upcase microservice. And then we will add two custom health checks, one for readiness and one for liveness. So at this point, we can go ahead and get started and we can have the Heladin CLI generate our project. We'll choose an MP quick start. We'll respond to just a few prompts. We will choose not to start the Heladin dev loop right now. We'll do that in just a moment. At this point, Heladin has generated our project and we can start the IDE opening that project. It will scan the Maven POM file. It'll look at the source code. What we can do in the meantime is we can manually start the dev loop for Heladin. And so what this will do, oh, I should first change to the correct directory. Now we can start it. Because the project hasn't been built before, it's compiling all the Java code it's creating the jar file that represents our project, and then it will go ahead and start that service. It's also gonna monitor the Java code, resource files, the POM, all the source that makes up our project. And anytime there's a change, the dev loop will automatically respond, rebuild, and restart the service. So now we can see that we've got the source code available in the IDE. Let's take a moment and see how our application works. Here I'm accessing an endpoint with just the path greet. And what comes back is a JSON object with a message, hello world. If I want a more personalized greeting returned to the client, I can provide the name that I want greeted and that comes back in the JSON message instead of the more generic world. So there's a couple other things we can look at. And these are features provided automatically by Heladin. There's a set of metrics that Heladin provides for every microservice. And they're grouped here into base and vendor categories. The vendor category is simply counting how many messages have arrived at our service of any type. And here the base category is reflecting the health of the and the state of the JVM. There are in fact other specific uh, health checks we can invoke. And these are also provided automatically by Heladin. Here's one for checking the liveness of the microservice. The outcome is up, meaning that the service should be considered as alive. 
And here we can see that it's deducing that state from three inputs, whether or not a deadlock is detected, whether or not sufficient disk space exists, and whether or not heap memory seems adequate. We can also check the readiness endpoint. And at the moment, this is a much briefer set of output. It says, yes, this service is also ready to receive and act on requests. One other item I'd like to show just very briefly is Halodon automatically provides support for OpenAPI. OpenAPI is a standard for documenting the API for a microservice to the outside world. And you can see that it contains information that describes the get with a specific name for our service, the get with no specific name, and an endpoint we haven't used yet, which allows us to change the greeting for example, from hello to hola or anything else. And this is automatically provided by Heladen. All right, so now let's take a look at what's involved in adding an app-specific metric to our application. The greet resource class is where most of the interesting work goes on in the greeting microservice. Here's the path that identifies where the endpoints within this class should respond. And then there's two methods that are mapped to the endpoints that we've used so far. One of them is get default message, which replies when there is no path parameter. The second is get message, which replies when there is a path parameter provided, indicating the name that's to be greeted. And we can see that we can declare what kind of output is returned from each method, what kind of HTTP method corresponds to that method and so forth. Each of these is using an internal private method called create response, and we'll come back to this a little bit later. What we wanna do is instrument each of these methods with a new metric that's particular to our application. And we can do that very simply by adding an annotation we're saying counted, which means we want a counter to be updated every time this method is invoked. We want the name of the metric to be get. Absolute means the name is not prefixed with the class name and the method name that the annotation is applied to. And reusable is set to true so that we can use exactly the same metric via exactly the same annotation to also measure more than one method. So now anytime either of these two get methods is invoked, our new custom counter will be updated. So I'm now going to click outside of the IDE. That'll cause the IDE to write those changes out to disk. And you can see in the lower left that the Heloton dev loop has detected that change and has responded by recompiling and rebuilding and restarting the service. All right, so now let's do this. We'll go back. We're gonna access our microservice one more time. We don't see any change in the output because all we did was to add a metric. Now what we'll do is let's go back to the Prometheus web page. We can refresh it and we see that now Prometheus has detected that our service is in fact up. And if we come back to this main page, we can see that here's an entry that Prometheus is making available for us to select to monitor our specific custom metric. And here we can see that Prometheus has noticed that our metric has been updated three times corresponding to the three invocations to the endpoints we made in the other window. So that's all it took for us to add a custom metric to our microservice, just a couple of lines of annotation. What we want to do next is we want to add the access to the upcase service using the MicroProfile REST client API. And so there's three parts to this. The first part is we need to create an interface that represents the API that the other microservice exposes to the outside world. And that's relatively straightforward to do. We create the interface, 
what we do is we annotate the, the interface with register rest client to indicate that it is in fact defining the API of some other microservice that we want to access. We tell it how to contact that other microservice and we describe what the API that that other microservice exposes should be. So that's step one. Step two is we need to add an additional Java class. We'll call this upcase access. And this Java class represents the way that we will actually access that upcase service from inside the greeting microservice. And so here we've marked this as an app scoped bean. We're injecting as a REST client the upcase service interface that we just created and declared. And get upcase you can think of as a convenience method that'll be accessible from inside of our greeting service when we want to access that other upcase service. So those were the first two steps. The third step is to come back to our greet resource class and make use of the upcase access that we just created. So first we're gonna create a declaration to hold a reference to that. We also need to have Heladin inject the current value for upcase access. Remember that was an app scope bean and we're going to re remember it when the constructor is called. And then the last thing we need to do is to actually make use of that upcase reference. We're going to do that from this create response method. You'll remember that this is the method that's used from inside both of the get methods that respond to the HTTP requests. And the greeting is formatted using two strings. The first is hello, or whatever other greeting we might have set from an endpoint. And the second is the name of the person that we want to be greeting. And in the simple case, it was just world. And in the more advanced case, we can specify what the name is. In both of those cases, currently, that value is just used directly in the formatting. But we can invoke the other microservice very simply by making use of that convenience method that we saw in the upcase access class that we added. Okay, so at this point, let's come back. We'll change focus. That causes the IDE to write out our files and it causes the dev loop to rebuild and restart the service. If we now come to our greeting URL, what we see is the response is now being uppercased. And the same will be true if we specify a specific name. All right, the, the third thing we wanted to do was to add some custom health checks to our microservice. And so we're gonna add one for liveness and one for readiness. Liveness simply means that the microservice is up. And in general, a microservice that reports that it is not alive should be typically restarted. And this is what Kubernetes does, for example. Readiness means that the service is not only up, but is capable of doing the work that's expected of it. And for example, Kubernetes will not direct requests to a microservice instance that is reporting that it's not ready. Okay, so let's start by adding a liveness check. And so we'll create a new Java class. This will be greet liveness check. And what we're gonna do is, this is a very, very simple liveness check. For some particular reason, we've decided that for this microservice to be considered alive, it needs to be running in an environment where the number of processors is at least two. Who knows why this might be the case, but we've decided that. And if that fails, then this microservice instance should in fact be restarted in an environment where there are at least two processors. You'll notice that we've used an annotation that says liveness to identify this is a health check that should be considered for liveness checking. It implements the health check interface which requires that we implement the call method. Anytime 
the microservices live health endpoint is invoked, then Halogen will invoke the call method on this class and it will return a response that indicates the name of this liveness check and then the state. This will be true if there's enough processors, false if there's not. And then in each case, we're going to report how many available processors the Java runtime reported that there are. Okay, so that's a very simple liveness check. Let's create a readiness check, which will be a little different. We'll call this greet readiness check. And what we're going to be doing here is Remember, the readiness check is more along the lines of, is the service capable of doing the work expected of it? And so we can see that we're annotating it with readiness and app scoped. The greet readiness check implements the health check interface. We're injecting the same upcase access interface class that we did in the greet service itself. And what we've decided here is that the greet microservice should not be considered ready unless the upcase service that it's invoking is responding in less than 200 milliseconds. If for some reason that takes longer, then the service itself is considered okay, but it shouldn't accept additional requests because that response time from the other service is too slow. Again, these are just very simple examples, but they help to illustrate how we go about adding these kinds of health checks. All right, so let's go ahead and let's try accessing these health checks. So here's the liveness check. And we can see that in addition to the liveness checks for deadlock, disk space, and heap memory, that were included before, here is our new liveness check that was evaluating the number of available processors and it's reporting that it's up because it's finding four processors and we wanted it to find at least two. All right, so that's good news. Let's take a look at the ready health check. Okay, so ready is reporting that this microservice for greeting should be considered down and that's because the time it took to respond, the time it took the upcase microservice to respond is more than 200 milliseconds. Now, the likelihood is that this is just because it had never been accessed before through the REST API. And so it took a little time to get that connection built and then get the message sent and returned. So if we just ping that endpoint again, okay, this looks a little better. Now our service is reporting itself as up and we can see why, because that round trip time to and from the upcase service is now way down to 18. So that's our demo. To wrap up, in just a few minutes, we have been able to use Haladin to generate a simple microservice. We added a custom metric to our microservice and we used an industry standard tool to monitor it. We invoked an entirely separate microservice from inside our microservice, and we added custom health checks that were tailored to the details of our microservice and its environment. Now, certainly this is a very simple example, but you can see how easily you can create and enhance your own microservices using Helen and MP and MicroProfile. Thank you.